Trump's first 2018 tweet, Pakistan has given us nothing but lies and deceit. Washington in his first tweet of the new year President Donald Trump slammed Pakistan, saying the country has given the U.S. nothing but lies and deceit. The United States has foolishly given Pakistan more than $33 billion in aid over the last 15 years, and they have given us nothing but lies and deceit, thinking of our leaders as fools, Trump tweeted Monday morning. They give safe haven to the terrorists we hunt in Afghanistan, with little help. No more. Pakistan Foreign Minister Kawaj Asif, speaking to CNN affiliate George TV Monday, said his country was ready to publicly provide every detail of the U.S. aid that it has received. We have already told the U.S. that we will not do more, so Trump's no more does not hold any importance, added Asif. The Pakistan government has yet to issue a formal response, though on Monday, U.S. Ambassador David Hale was summoned to the foreign ministry to meet with senior foreign office officials, a U.S. embassy spokesman confirmed. The New York Times reported last week that the U.S. might withhold $255 million in aid to Pakistan because of Trump's frustration over its handling of terrorists in the country. White House officials met to decide whether to cancel the aid, the Times reported. The commander of the NATO-led coalition in Afghanistan, U.S. Army General John Nicholson, said in November that Pakistan had not changed its behavior since Trump announced his new policy for Afghanistan and the wider region, which specifically calls on Pakistan to do more. No, I haven't seen any change yet in their behavior, Nicholson told reporters after a NATO defense minister's meeting in Brussels when asked whether Pakistan was cooperating more in eliminating Taliban sanctuaries. You've heard the public statements from President Trump, from Defense Secretary James Mattis, from Chairman of the Joint Chiefs General Joseph Dunford, from Secretary of State Rex Tursen, so we are engaging at the very highest levels with the Pakistanis to work together with them against these terrorists that are undermining the stability of the entire region, Nicholson added. Pakistan has fought hard and suffered heavily against those terrorists focused on its government, and now we are asking them to focus on the terrorists that are attacking Afghanistan and attacking the coalition, he continued. The United States has been very clear about the direction we want to go, and we hope to see some change in the coming weeks and months. In contrast to his tweet Monday, Trump in October was talking about how much Pakistan now respected the U.S. After American Caitlin Coleman and her Canadian husband, Joshua Boyle, were freed as Taliban prisoners, the president praised Pakistan's cooperation with the U.S. This is a very positive moment for our country's relationship with Pakistan. Trump said, adding that the Pakistani government's cooperation is a sign that is honoring America wishes for it to do more to provide security in the region. Trump said Pakistan is starting to respect the United States again. Later that month U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tursen visited Pakistan and urged its leaders to step up efforts to eradicate militants and terrorists operating within the country. South Korean President Welcomes North Korean Olympic Participation South Korean President Moon Jae-in welcomed Kim Jong-un's speech and called for swift measures to help North Korea participate in the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics during a cabinet meeting in Seoul on Tuesday. The North Korean leader struck an unusually conciliatory note in his annual New Year's Day address Monday, declaring his wish for a peaceful resolution with our southern border. In the televised address, Kim called for peace on the Korean peninsula and said North Korean representatives should start talks with their South Korean counterparts as soon as possible to discuss sending a delegation to the 2018 Winter Games, to be hosted in South Korea next month. Moon, who has long advocated for closer relations with the North, described Kim's remarks as a response to our proposal to turn the Pyeongchang Olympic Games into an epoch-making opportunity to improve inter-Korean relations and establish peace.
Moon said he would ask the Unification Ministry, the government department responsible for inter-Korean relations, and the Ministry of Culture and Sports to quickly come up with follow-up measures for the speedy restoration of South-North Korean dialogue and realize the North Korean delegation's participation in the Pyeongchang Olympics. The 2018 Winter Olympics, which are scheduled to begin on February 9, have been championed by Moon as an opportunity to open dialogue with Kim and help ease tensions on the Korean Peninsula. In an interview with CNN in November, the South Korean president described the Games as an opportunity for inter-Korean peace and reconciliation, and expressed his hope that North Korea would participate. The Games are due to take place 30 years after Seoul hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics, a turbulent era in which a number of nations, including North Korea, decided to boycott the Games. To date, only two North Korean athletes had qualified for the Games, figure skaters Ryam tae ok and Kim Joo-sik, however, the country's National Olympic Committee did not meet an October 30 deadline to accept their spot. There has been talk of the International Olympic Committee (IOC) granting an additional quota, something previously proposed by Choi Moon-soon, governor of the Gangwon province that will host the Winter Games. On Tuesday, South Korean Unification Minister Chol mung jin proposed high-level government talks with North Korea on January 9 at the border village of Panmunjom in the demilitarized zone (DMZ). The government proposes the North to hold high-level inter-Korean government talks at the Peace House of Panmunjom in consideration that the Winter Olympics is about the month away and to discuss related matters such as the participation of North Korea's delegation in the Pyeongchang Olympics, Cho said during a press briefing in Seoul on Tuesday. He also reaffirmed that the South Korean government is willing to have dialogue with North Korea and is open to suggestions for the timing, venue and format follow-up measures. Since coming to office in May, Moon's willingness to seek a diplomatic solution to the Korean crisis has on occasion appeared at odds with that of the U.S. In September, U.S. President Donald Trump accused Moon of seeking appeasement with North Korea. Moon's stance has been compared to the so-called sunshine policy of the liberal governments of 1998 to 2008. Under the sunshine policy, Seoul actively engaged Pyongyang which led to closer relations on both sides of the border and saw two South Korean presidents visit the North Korean capital. However, the approach ultimately failed to halt North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Speaking Monday, Moon said improvements in inter-Korean relations was not a matter that can go a separate way from the issue of resolving the North Korean nuclear issue. I also ask the foreign ministry to closely consult with our allies and the international community to push for both an improvement in inter-Korean relationship and the resolution of the North Korean nuclear issue at the same time," said Moon. Thong Jo, a fellow at the Carnegie Tsinghua Center in Beijing told CNN that North Korea does not want to appear threatening and provocative. He, Kim, wants to convince the international community that his nuclear weapons are purely for self-defense and wants to have a negotiated solution with the United States on the basis that he gets to keep its nuclear deterrent capability, Jean said. After achieving a preliminary strategic deterrent capability, North Korea might want to escalate tensions and seize the Winter Olympics as a golden opportunity. The Games make it possible for Washington and Seoul to meet Pyongyang's demand for self-restraint, adjusting their military exercises, without losing face and appearing weak on Pyongyang.